Hi everybody, this is Anne. In this video, I'll demonstrate the technique of adding darts to your pottery. Learning the basics of darting can help you create more complex pottery forms. So what are darts? You create darts by removing V-shaped or leaf-shaped cutouts from the body of your cylinder, then pushing the clay back together to alter the shape. In sewing terms, there are single-pointed darts, which are V-shaped darts taken from the rim. The wider the V-shape is, the more volume you remove and the more severe the angle that you create. And double-pointed darts, which are cut below the rim, usually in the shape of a leaf or an oval. First, I'll demonstrate the single point. This process can be used on hand-built projects or wheel-thrown pottery, but I'll throw this one. It's always a good idea to make design decisions in advance, so you know what you're going to make. In this case, my darting should not affect the floor of the piece, so I'll throw a cylinder with a floor. I'm going to start with straight walls, as altering more severely curved walls would create more stress on the clay. As this piece will eventually have four darts, I'll go ahead and mark out north, south, east, and west along the rim by using a trimming spinner. I balance the trimmer in the center of the cylinder. The fourths are indicated by the gray marks spaced along the edge. As I want each dart to be the same size, I created a template two centimeters along the top edge and three centimeters from the top to the point. You can make the template whatever size you want. The bigger the template, the more volume you remove from the cylinder and the more severe the angle. I centered the template at one of the marks along the rim and marked it out. I then made the cuts and removed the triangle. Remember, the dryness of the piece is important for this part. You don't want the clay too wet or you won't get nice crisp seams and angles. And you don't want the clay that's too dry or it'll crack when you're altering it. I then scored and slipped the edges and attached them together, first on one side and then the other. I gently folded the edges together, letting the dart guide me to the connection point. This helps avoid stretching and misshaping the clay, keeping the angles nice and crisp. I use the tip of the paintbrush as an extension of my fingers to seal the seam. To avoid stress along that seam, I like to add an extra little coil to the inside. I roll it, flatten it out a little, score it, slip it and attach it with a blunt end of a paintbrush. Remember, you want the least amount of DNA on your piece to keep it as clean as possible. Now here's what a one-darted cylinder looks like. From this new form, you can use your imagination to create some really fun pieces. I created this picture from that form. I still have a little more refining to do, but if this is a project you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments section below. Now let's take a dart from the opposite side of the cylinder. I'm using the exact same template and technique to remove the second dart.
you'll see that this alters the rim of the cylinder as well as creating angled points on both sides. Now I'll cut out the other two darts as well. I can leave the rim as a square shape, or I can round it off. But I decided to round it off. As interesting as that shape is, it just didn't look complete. So I decided to add something to the top. In preparation, I compressed the rim to add more area for attachment. Then I threw a smaller collar and scored and slipped it in place. I started with a wider rim, but changed my mind. I collared the rim and then made cuts to it to echo the darted edges on the body. Now here's what I came up with. Now onto the double pointed dart. Again, I threw a straight sided mug with a floor. I created a little indention under the rim so that I'd have less chance of it warping or cracking. Again, I created a template. I folded a piece of paper and made a cut like this over the fold so that when I unfolded it, it looked like a leaf. I placed it under the band area of the rim, traced it, and then cut the clay out. I then scored the inside edge, slipped one side, and pushed the edges together and attached them. I really worked that clay together to make a good seal. And again, I worked the clay along the inside and attached a coil over that. Here's an example of a mug that I made using this technique. You can see the dart under the handle. To make the form even more interesting, I decided to take another dart out of the other side of the cylinder as well. Making two darts altered the rim as well as the body, so I decided to round it off and trim the rim to straighten it out. For fun, I pulled some clay and attached it to each side like so. Then I coiled it up tightly. I did the same thing to the other side with another coil. The extra little swirly touches add a whimsical touch to the new form. Remember, these are very basic pieces. You can really get creative by adding additional elements or taking away other elements. Use your imagination for the darting, like Carrie and Val did for these pieces. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, we'd appreciate it if you'd like, share, and subscribe to our video. See you next time in the studio.